So as we had mentioned earlier today, we decided to, to shorten a bit uh, Farkas less to talk uh, about the models and uh, the project proposals so that so that we could uh, address how all the different parts of ALF, uh, which we have been explaining to you, fit together, right? Um, that's uh, very important. I think it's going to be helpful for many people who have been trying to, to solve the exercise, for example, from the tutorial part. Uh, and definitely it's going to be helpful for the project uh, execution as well. So yeah, so enjoy, Johannes. Yeah, thank you, Jefferson. So, right, as you said, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, yeah, a couple of overview aspects in a top to bottom approach. Uh, for example, saying and listing what the different directories in ALF are, and then walk my way through um, to uh, the source code a little bit and how they are dependent on each other. And then I probably have time permits will also show uh, how you could uh, define your own new model, which uh, some of the people have already done, at least in these uh, workshop sessions this morning. Uh, and please feel free to interrupt me at any time. Uh, it's really important to us that you understand how the code works and how it interacts and that you feel somewhat more comfortable if you want to implement your own model and your own changes. So yes, please feel free to interrupt me at any time. So uh, the first thing I wanted to show is the different directories that we have in the ALF code directory where the source code is and where we have been working with. Um, so most notably noticeably is the program directory, which contains um, almost all of the source code files. The only exceptions to those uh, program directories is the libraries part where we have another set of source code files. And the difference is that, well, as the name suggests in the libraries, there is stuff that is more commonly used. So for example, there is some uh, linear algebra and math routines hidden in the libraries, or I believe the lattice is also defined and stored in this library parts. Whereas more of the quantum Monte Carlo uh, routines, they are then in the program directory. Um, and I would also like to mention um, the analysis which is actually the third directory of source code files. Uh, let's just show the contact in there, uh, which contains the source code for the analysis routines. <clears throat> um, exactly. And then uh, in the documentation, we provide a copy of the current documentation, which includes a full PDF uh, where you could read uh, all the details on the functions, what they do, how the code is set up and how it works. Um, there is a second documentation, but I believe this is easier accessible through the web page. I haven't used it in a long time, so maybe I will get back to this later on, um, which is a style of documentation which is more closely related to what people might know from LAPAC, so that it's very easy to see the signature of the function, what are the arguments passed to it, and how does it work, what does it do. Um, right. Um, okay, so I think uh, the next step would be to look more carefully into the program directory, what we have in there, and how things interact with each other. Uh, we partially also already discussed this during one of the um, break room sessions uh, or break room discussions. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Uh, right, so in this program directory, uh, there is only one more subdirectory called Hamiltonians, which contains all the Hamiltonian modules and the definition of the model of the Hubbard model of the TV 
model of the C2 meta model that has just been uh, described by Fakir. And then the rest is uh, generic quantum Monte Carlo source code uh, or predefined structures that are easy to use then within the Hamiltonian. Um, okay. Are there any questions to this setup already? Because otherwise I think I will switch to the source code and share a different screen. Actually, I think I want to share my whole desktop so that's easier to jump back and forth between the different parts. <clears throat> um, and increase the font size for readability. So let me maybe start. Do I want to start with the main file? No, I don't want to start with the main file. Um, let me walk you through the Hubbard model as one example of the Hamiltonians that we have defined and highlight a few functions that are visible um, to the main routine, which are called by the main routine where the Monte Carlo is being done, and then walk my way into the interaction of the different source code bits and pieces. Um, right. So in any of the uh, Hamiltonians that we have, we define what is called a module in Fortran we can increase the font size. Um, and this module encapsulates all the uh, features of your Hamiltonian. Uh, most noticeably, it uses a bunch of uh, predefined, um, how do I say this best, collections of variables and functions so that it's easy to define, say, for example, the operators for the interaction or the operators um, for the, inter the non-interacting part. These are both instances of type operator and this type operator is defined and uh, yeah, initialized in this use operator module. Uh, similarly, for the projective code, uh, Fakir said that one will have to define a trial wave function, which is then projected onto the true in ground state of the interacting system. And this trial wave function is stored in what is called wave functions, which again has been defined here in this sub module. Um, so, yes, so there is a group of variables which have been defined here. None of them has the tag private. So they are all publicly visible to the main uh, routines to the Monte Carlo part of the code. Uh, and I think most of them are by now or hopefully are by now self-explaining. Uh, I've went through the operators and the wave functions. Uh, we have N sigma, which is storing the field configurations uh, and dim, which is again, the total number of degrees of freedom in the block diagonal form. So not counting the spin of the SU2 symmetry or the flavor, which is then encoded here, the number of trotter slices, the number of slices for your projection in the projective code, a, um, binary variable if you want to run the projective code with a finite for it a zero temperature if you don't want to use it. This group communication communicator is um, for the MPI communication and this logical turns and on or off the symmetric decomposition. And then anything which follows from now on is kind of a private variable, which means none of the other routines will access to those um, variables that you have here. And in principle, you're free to do whatever you want. This actually does include the observables, even though it's highly recommended to use the observable 
uh, structures that we provide, uh, but you could be free to define your complete uh, new observable, manage the uh, disk output, manage the analysis in your own way. This is not seen by the quantum Monte Carlo part of this algorithm. Okay, again, please feel free to interrupt me at any point. If I'm going too fast or too slow, let me know. <clears throat> um, okay, so next to these uh, variables that are defined in the Hamiltonian class, there is a set of routines and this routine ham set is used and called from the main part of the code. And this is used to set the Hamiltonian to define, uh, allocate and initialize the operators, the number of flavors, essentially to define and initialize all of those variables that we have done here. How you do this is up to you. And this is being done in this ham set routine. And let me be a little bit more precise within this ham set routine, for example, we read in the variables, but we also do uh, call the routine which creates the lattice, the routine which sets the non-interacting part of the Hamiltonian and then the interactions. This distinction that you have explicit functions you call to initialize those routines is very convenient and generates a readable source code, but it's not necessarily required since those are private functions and they are not interacted with in the main file. So ham set is a public function which is called from the outside. Ham lattice is not. Ham hop is also not. Ham try away function is, I believe, also only called from ham set. Is that true? Ham try away function, yes. Uh, ham v, the same thing. The allocation of the observables, however, is present in the main file because only the quantum Monte Carlo knows when one collections of bins is done and can initialize the allocation of your memory space, the print to the bin, the measurement. When did I update the auxiliary fields enough to trigger a new measurement? Uh, so this one is a function which is uh, visible to the outside. This applies to all of these observables routines as I have discussed yesterday. And then these are the most noticeable functions where you start interacting with the outside world. Um, there is a set of functions related to Eduardo's question during Fakia's lecture. And this is the um, global move routines. Uh, since most of our models don't really have global moves, it's easy to um, yeah, forget about those functions, but you still should, should still define them. Uh, they're not really model dependent at this stage, so that's why they have been exported to this Hubbard Hamiltonian include file. I've discussed the first two functions already during yesterday's talk. And here, let me highlight this. I hope you can see that, maybe like this. Uh, this is one subroutine, which is allowing you to do global moves. And here, to be more precise, it's global move within a fixed time slice tau, but you could change the auxiliary fields and on many positions. And uh, the configuration that you already have is the NC routine, which is part of your private variables. And then you would be defining a list which is to be flipped. So which positions did you choose that should be flipped and what should be the new uh, value and how many of those do you want to define? I don't want to go into the global, into the details of this global move tau. I just want to highlight 
um, where is it? There should also be a global move. Right, here we go. There is a second routine where you can do a full global move uh, on all time slices, all positions at the same time. And I propose an update for this. And you do get provided uh, with the current or old configuration and it would be your job to define the new configuration with whatever sort of global update you have uh, in mind. One way what one could do is if you think about um, fermionic fields that are coupled to um, Ising auxiliary fields which I don't think we have discussed too much during the, this workshop until now. Um, you could, for example, try the Wolf algorithm, which ignores the fermions and only considers the uh, Ising degrees of freedom and propose an update for this Ising degree of freedom like this, and then hope that even though it's coupled to fermions, it's still a better global move than not doing any global moves. Okay. Um, right. Uh, and there are a few other functions which I think I don't want to mention here, but these are all functions that are visible to the outside. Uh, which might be more interesting is to have a quick look at the main file, even though I'm kind of running out of time. So Jefferson, please let me know how the schedule works and how much time I still have and when we want to move on. Yeah, I think um, we, are we are followed by a break anyway. Okay. And you did start 10 minutes late. So I would say you have at least 10 minutes. Okay. Yes. So again, let me open the main file. This is the file where we actually define what the program does, the program main. It does include the Hamiltonian and the definitions that we have just discussed in the Hamiltonian uh, Hubbard model. Uh, and because of this use statement, it's able to use all the functions from here. So most notab no noticeably, it can call the observable routines or it can call the ham set routines. So actually, let's just search for hem set. And you can see that, let's keep this highlighted and then walk our way back to here. Uh, there is a bunch of variables that are declared. We have the declaration of the name lists for the generic quantum Monte Carlo uh, variables, like how many sweeps do we want to do, which has uh, um, was explained in Fakia's lecture that the sweeps is the sequential move through your uh, the auxiliary fields and the updates on the fields. How many bins do you want to calculate? Do you want to uh, define a maximum CPU time that is allowed to be used? So you could say, for example, it's uh, defined in hours. So if you would set CPU max to one, then the program will run for one hour and shut down after, if it's able to produce a bin within this hour, it will shut down in time so that it doesn't run longer. Uh, if it's not able to produce a single bin in the CPU max time, it will nevertheless run until the first bin is finished. Uh, only after the bin it's checked how long the program runs. Then there is again a bit of MPI communication for say in this case, the tempering moves. Uh, but then here we go. Once this initialization, the read and uh, broadcasting of variables is done, uh, we have the first call to one of the Hamiltonian routines, namely HEMSET. From here on out, all the Hamiltonian routines uh, or the, the, the um, features of the Hamiltonian have been defined and can be used. Um, yes, so I don't want to go through the rest of this in too much detail, but then maybe highlight this section here. This is where the actual Monte Carlo simulation starts. 
This is the loop over the number of sweeps where I go back and forth to do uh, the updating routine. Uh, there is some stabilization required. And then we have the routines where actually the call to the Hamiltonian is triggered to do a measurement. Um, and then we should, I believe, repeat the whole thing for the down sweep. Um, and then, um, yeah, so, so this would be another routine which is taking care of the time displaced measurements. It first has to calculate the time displaced grease functions. That's why you don't see the immediate call to offset T. Um, yes, but I think I don't want to get into too much more detail uh, unless you have questions to it because of, otherwise I'm afraid it's getting a bit overwhelming. Um, are there any questions for this part of the source code? Okay, if this is not the case, I will go back to the program directory. And what I now want to show is what you would have to do if you want to implement a, or to, to introduce a new Hamiltonian. Uh, to do this, let me actually undo a few changes that I have done already first. Uh, did say this. I want to undo the changes in this make file and in the other make file as well, so that I can show you how this happens. Uh, let's go to the Hamiltonians directory. And uh, of course, you would first have to define your new Hamiltonian. In this case, this is already done. Uh, so I have a new Hamiltonian file for the quantum spin hall um, project that has been proposed in one of Fakir's uh, workshop proposals. At this stage, I believe it's pretty much a copy of the Hubbard plane vanilla module, but this shall not be, still be important. So this should not be so important right now. The important part is that I do have a new Hamiltonian module file. And now what do I have to change so that I can actually create an executable uh, using this new module definition. So first we will go one step up towards the program directory. And in this program directory, there is a make file which defines all the steps required to generate an executable. So let's take a look at this. And we already left comments to all the places where you will have to change something. So in this case, I will have to add this new quantum spin hall Hamiltonian, get a new line, use a tab because make can be a little bit um, strict in terms of formatting rules. And then Hamiltonian underscore quantum spin hall mod dot o dot o. Uh, we want to add this to the binary list of targets that can be created. And let's call this executable quantum spin hall instead of, for example, Hubbard out, so Hubbard out. Uh, if you want to make all targets, this all targets should also include the quantum spin hall. So again, it has been marked by this comment line. So let's do make tidy to clean up first and really recompile the quantum spin, spin hall target. Of course, we still haven't really decided, uh, defined how the quantum spin hall is generated, but this can be done here as indicated by those comments. And what you pretty much have to do is you have, you, you can use one of the existing targets and copy paste this. And you see in this red highlighting that make can have quite some limitations. Maybe it wants to have 
a tap at the first line. And then we have to replace every occurrence of Hubbard by quantum spin hall for this example. Quantum spin hall, and of course, this Hubbard occurrence as well. So now I can type make quantum spin hall to apply those rules where I will generate the quantum spin hall out using the model that has been defined in the Hamiltonian quantum spin mod.f90. So we should save this. And then there would be only one more place that has to be modified. Namely, we didn't enter the program directory to issue the make commands, but we did this directly in ALF, which means in ALF directory, we also have the make file. So let's take a quick look at this. Introduce one change. I will again use the Hubbard and copy paste from the Hubbard model. I think I missed this part. Let's do tap proxy Hubbard. And once more, replace quantum spin or replace Hubbard by quantum spin hall. Uh, with this uh, double point and lib behind it, we are encoding that the quantum spin hall depends on the libraries uh, since it uses the letters and other things. So you don't have to compile the libraries first, but you can just compile quantum spin hall. And if the library doesn't exist, it would be compiled for you. Uh, I think. That's about it for- Do you want to include it into the all list on the top? Uh, oh, yes, I, no, I don't have. It's optional at this moment. Yeah, I yeah. Don't even, no, I don't have to. It's, this is partly done in the, um, so this lib all, uh, compiles the all targets of the program directory. You don't have to add it here. What you can add- Exactly, I mean, in the list. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that list. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what this list is, uh, thank you for the comment. Um, this list tells you that there's there will not be a quantum spin hall file or directory created in the ALF directory when you trigger this command. Because actually, let me, let's, Let's first do it like this, and then let me show something how, what can go wrong with this. Uh, okay, so to be safe, let's source, let's make clean because I can't remember which program configuration I was compiling before, and then make quantum spin hall. This should compile now the new target, unless I have made a mistake. And uh, if everything works well and we compiled, there will be the new executable quantum spin hall dot out in the program directory. And this should not take too much more time. It seems like it worked. So proc quantum spin hall, there it is. Let's check the timestamp, at least in my local time, it has been compiled a minute ago, less than a minute ago. Um, what I can do now is I can remove this. So make should now compile this again. And to be safe, let's also remove this .o file. I think this is still there. Ah, it's not there. Uh, anyways, I think this should be enough so that make uh, runs this again. Maybe it has the mod, right? The under underscore mod. Yes. Is that it? Let's try. Yeah, it doesn't really matter because I think when the target isn't doesn't exist, it will trigger the full compilation. Mm, uh, we can I also so, do too. this make clean. So now we are sure that it would have to be recompiled. But before we issue this a second time, let's remove this quantum spin hall here. 
in the phony line of the make file. And let's create a touch quantum spin hall file, which is a plain text file, nothing in it. Yeah, quantum spin hall. But this file is enough so that I believe make should now not compile quantum spin hall, but it should tell me that it's already there. Okay, this demonstration failed. Maybe this quantum spin hall is too new. No, I think I think the problem is that you made you made the make it clean before, so it has compiled the rest. Ah, of it. right. Yes. So without make clean, it would have not compiled this. So then this uh, file here, this. Show but it still should be a demonstration, maybe. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so let's only remove, or let's pretend that we have changed the Hamiltonian file. So we have changed the source code in the Hamiltonian's Hamiltonian quantum spin hall. And now it should usually recompile, but hopefully this works and it's not again. Yes, no, it did compile. Okay, I am not able to reproduce the error we had uh, before, but this should not be too important. Let's just be on the safe side and follow the expression and explanation here not at, and at quantum spin hall, which means that make should have ignored quantum spin hall here and not um, trigger the error that I wanted to trigger, which I couldn't. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so yes, I think this would have been the overview I wanted to discuss today, and I'm happy to take additional questions on how the source code is organized, how it works with each other, and so on and so forth. Okay, thank you, Hans. Uh, I hope it's uh, it's been helpful for uh, for everyone who's trying to to deal with this this sort of programming for the first time especially, but even for those who have experience with programming but uh, don't know ALF yet. Okay, you have some positive feedback already on the chat. So does anyone have any question? All right, I'm gonna then in interrupt the the recording, but we can. We are now on the on-call time, so questions on the talk or on the or, or about the projects or even the tutorial. So, and support is open now. So, once again, thank you, uh, Johannes, and thank you for everyone there. Bye.